This reading of poems by Karen McCarthy Wolfe took place at the Poetry and Medicine Symposium to mark the 2015 awards of the Hippocrates Prize for Poetry and Medicine. After the birth, she spends a year and a half taking photographs of dead animals and prizes the most pristine. Her collection includes a mole, its pink fleshy digits spread wide like oars, an open-eyed field mouse with a blade of grass and a blue bottle on its flank, a hawk in a stream, a fledgling wren, a flattened rabbit in threshed straw, its hind legs splayed like an X in a crossword square, a field littered with disintegrating geese, their ribs and feathers matted to form a hardened, gelatinous web. There is also a radiant mallard surrounded by a constellation of dandelion flowers and clocks. And finally, a pony on its back at the side of the road that cuts through Dartmoor. The pony's legs stick up into the air and a cylinder of dung protrudes halfway out of its anus. The pony's genitalia are exposed and she can be identified as a mare. Hawk. I am most interested in the claws and feet which are surprisingly municipal in colour, like double yellow lines, while the talons are brown as earwigs. That's not to say the mottled feathers flowing or that gurgle rushing over the corpse so it disintegrates the eyes already white isn't calming, because it is a comfort, this return to water to the stream, to the earth, the mindless torrent of the brook, gentle but insistent as it passes under the broken gate, highballed with moss. Um, I wrote to Avery of small birds in the aftermath of a four-term stillbirth. Um, I thought I'd read um, one of the poems, I'll read a few from the hospital part of the book. Um, and I noticed earlier that there were some poems in response to the um, echo copy of the um, which I missed, I'm very, very sad to miss them actually. Um, and this, this, this next one is um, sort of in that vein. Um, it's in a pairing. I don't know if you can see, but it's sort of that shape. Rough. and it's called More Blur. Um, and actually More Blur um, is a phrase, um, in fact I wrote in my notebook, um, Screen Blue Murder, and I thought, I wonder why we say that, I have no idea. Um, and it's actually a euphemism, it, um, it's French, um, for Mon Dieu, um, which is the death of God, but uh, uh, people used to say More Blur, Blue Death. Brushes, and there's no more. A whirl of empty dresses in this mud cracked room. Palm frond feathers, helicopter downwards, shallow roots torn. A broken bird, song explodes on a frequency of earth and lime, too high to hear. We haven't got a heart beat. We haven't got five minutes. A groan of sea shushes up on shore. Rushes and there's no no ha 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 of music and radio. The thud of workmen, clatter of hollow poles, scaffolding. 
a truck in first gear, footsteps, school, an O of bells, clang clangs across the river, and then the hush of marble, eyes unseen, eyes unopened, endlessly eyes. A surprising amount of bureaucracy in um, death one finds. The paperwork. I sit up in bed, try to make up my mind. Will it change anything if I decide your heart, liver, lungs, kidneys are returned? to the abdominal cavity. My forefinger traces a path through. Option 5C, I understand these parts will not be returned to their original position. Your navel has not yet shriveled. Each toenail is sacred. Under other requests or concerns, hands, feet, face, hair, all must be left intact, brain to be restored to head, skin stitched neatly and correctly. I peer at the page on the doctor's lap. Yes, they may saw through your breastbone but they'll sew your little tummy up as if you were a rare medieval tapestry. I'll make sure of that. Eyes not to be touched. The doctor bites her lip, writes it in the box. And amongst that um, bureaucracy, I also found quite a profound humanity. The registrar's office isn't really an office. It's a cupboard with no source of natural light. And I don't realise it, but I'm loved up like the other mothers gazing at Maconian as if it's fresh tar on a road, not an odorless black ship that's been on the boil for nine months. And Lydia, that's the registrar's name, she gives me a paper cone of iced water from the dispenser to calm me down, and it does calm me. The water flows through me, and now we're holding each other, while Simon's down in the mortuary, and I tell her all about how he lost his mother from a brain tumour when I was six months gone, how her name was Lydia too, that it was so quick and now this. We're still holding on when he comes back, then joins us in a circle of three, and even another form to fill in and can't sew me up as the morphine unpeels another mezzanine of hell in a shopping centre where women with rigid quiffs glide up and down glass escalators and people believe in the faux marble fountains, although it's all really a shivering colon. Anyway, I'm determined, I say as I leave the room, when I get out of here, if it's the last thing I do, I will get you a window. Because that's not right, expecting someone to live and work and sign death certificates without a window. No one should have to put up with that. It's not right. She's a good person with a good heart. She should have a window. And I went to Spain. Um, and I wrote, um, I wrote a long sequence of poems in, in the book that are all about the moon um, and with a different, I became interested in the different names of different cultures.
cultures assigned to different moons at different times. Um, and I'm just going to read one of them. Blood. Death is out hunting tonight. The moon, a torch in his hand. Deer, bear, or babies. Sugar skulls and swaddled loaves are offered up for Los Angelitos, while songbirds dart, pick strands <coughs> of flesh from between his teeth, their music constant as he strides. Of course, it doesn't really go like this. <coughs> the doctor wastes 20 minutes trying to scrape a sample from your scalp by the time they slice me open. It's too late. Blood splashed aprons are binned with pointless sharks. Yet still, my love, I long for you as the two caged canaries who hop and whirl from the plastic perch to the nest coiled from wire and filled with <coughs> fertilized eggs long for the ravine. Um, 
anyway, for a long time. It's, it's a bird that's born and lives and dies in October. It's a spring bird because it's from Chile. Um, well, certainly that's what I thought. But then I kind of realised that some of the birds were looking more mythical within the book. So some of the birds are mythical. I've never quite worked out um, about the what to But um, it's, uh, yeah, that is it. An aviary of small birds. My love is an aviary of small birds, and I must learn to leave the door ajar. Are you the sparrow who landed when I sat at a slate table sewing lettuces? Webs wander, Lolo Rosso, English cos. Swift and deft you flit and peck, peck, quick as the light that constitutes your spirit. Yes, you were briefer than the Moody's octave room. So much rain that night. Our room is an ocean where swallows dive. The bubble bursts too soon, too late, too long. All sorts of microscopia swim upstream, float in on sun's storm. The tenor of your heart is true as a tuning fork struck and high. My love is the bird who flies free. The Eupocrates Prize is an annual award for a poem on a medical theme, unpublished, written in English, of up to 50 lines of text. There is an open international category, first prize £5,000, a UK NHS category, first prize £5,000, and a Young Poet Award prize £500.